Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. A really interesting question we've had put to us today from Alex. So here's the question. I didn't know where to suggest this topic, blah, 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 blah. As many people have the feeling something with the DCS F16 performance or the FCLS could be off, comma, I was wondering if there is any way to find out if the fly-by-wire DCS aircraft are really designed unstable like the real world ones from what i understand is that unstable means that the center of gravity behind lies behind the aircraft the airplane that's not true but i know what he's saying which makes it difficult to control without a flight computer in low speeds but almost impossible at high speeds is there a way to go into the data of the flight model in dcs and read out the center of gravity or even better disable the flight control computer to see this effect I was wondering if the flight control system of the F-16 and the F-18 was just put on top of a stable plane or if the planes are unstable and the FCLS is essential to be able to fly it. Thanks for the help and good work. Right, let's um, summarise this question. This question is asking whether the planes that are insta unstable in real life, like the F-16, like the Su-27, like probably the Mirage, I'm not sure, but we can check it out. Are they modelled as unstable in DCS and then have the fly-by-wire added on top of that to create stability? Or is that not the case in DCS? And we're pretty sure we know the answer to this now, but we'll go through it in steps. The first thing is, as usual, we've got to teach the people who don't know what is static instability outside of DCS. Before I unleash Tate on this, let me quickly explain the diagram here. We've got this guy here. He is statically unstable here, static instability. That means the center of lift is blue here. And in this case, the center of gravity is shown in red, is way behind the center of lift. Down here, we have this statically stable aircraft. And in this case, the center of gravity, which is red, is in front of the center of lift here, which is blue. This is where we're going to bring in our very own aerodynamicist, which we're very lucky to have, Tate. Sort of three types of stability in an aircraft in terms of static stability. You've got unstable or static instability. You've got static neutral stability and you've got statically stable or static stability. So in terms of static stability, it's all about our center of lift and our center of gravity. It's all about the positioning of these two. And if we have one in front of the other, it can have some rather adverse effects, as you'll see later. If we have the center of gravity behind the center of lift, then we have what's called a statically uh, unstable aircraft. That's because as we pitch up, the lift vector will get larger. And as you pitch up in a statically unstable aircraft, you're going to get a pitching moment or a torque, so a turning force backwards so as you pitch up it's going to want to pitch up more now that's like throwing a dart the wrong way around if you throw a dart the wrong way around and the flights are at the front you'll just see it flip over in a statically stable aircraft as you can see on the right if we get a disturbance such as a gust we're going to increase our alpha and therefore the lift force is going to increase as well as you can see on the left hand side the lift force is behind the center of gravity and therefore it's going to pitch us forwards once it's pitched us forwards, we're going to perhaps overshoot, depending on the type of aircraft you're in, and then you're going to get a negative alpha. And so you're going to reduce your lift vector, and therefore you're going to get a turning moment back upwards. So you're always wanting to go back to equilibrium. So it's like if you have a ball in a bowl and you, you hit it, it's always going to want to go down to the bottom of that ball again. That is a stable environment, a stable system. If you have a ball on top of a hill and you hit it, no matter how small the hit is, it's always going to want to roll off that hill. So now we've got the basics, we need to go into DCS World and actually present this. Let's start with the easiest one that everyone knows in DCS, the Su-27 flanker. The best way is to not have any input from me, myself, the pilot, because I'm a pilot, I'm biased. What isn't biased is the machine itself. So what I can do is just go to failures and I can turn off the ASC, the automatic stability control. Uh, this is the thing. It's basically the fly-by-wire in the terms of the pitch. Some of these play aircraft we're looking at today have fly-by-wire in terms of multiple axes, some just in the pitch. So I will show my controls down the bottom left here to show that I'm putting zero input let's let the plane fly at some point the ASC is going to fail and if it is an unstable aircraft then it will tumble and there you go tumble uh, notice how it tumbled nose first which is interesting that's an interesting thing Tate uh, strangely it tumbled nose first which is strange if the center of gravity is at the back I've never noticed that before but it's completely normal um, it depends on what way the disruption is so if you get a gust upwards and you get a um, 
a lift moment upwards, then you're going to get a pitch moment backwards. If you get a lift moment forwards, then remember the two are in equilibrium, so you're not having a negative uh, lift, you're just having less lift than, than weight, um, so it'll just tumble forwards. And Roger. One thing we forgot to explain is um, our viewers at home are probably saying, well, why? Do you make this um, aircraft unstable? And the reason you make it unstable naturally without uh, thinking about the flyby way is to increase maneuverability. Do you know why that is? Again, I'll bring it back to the dart. If you throw a dart, then it flips over super duper quickly, doesn't mm -hmm. it? So you can just increase your roll rate. You can increase your um, pitch rate and your turn. So with an instable aircraft with a flyby wire bolted on the top to keep it stable, then that, that's going to give you the ability to manoeuvre faster. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, out of interest, let's go and choose a different aircraft in which we can remove the uh, pitch control as well. So uh, we've been doing this all day, basically, or, or for, for a long time, and we found that these are the best ways to show them. There are other ways of showing uh, these results. So if we go to a JF-17 now, and in terms of failures, we've got excellent control over what we want to fail. So the the, the the best thing we can simulate, we think here, is to simply remove as much control of the elevator as we can. So we're going to fail everything here. Hydraulics, electrics, computer, uh, pitch rate gyros. So everything in terms of pitch goes. So we should not have any control over those, uh, the elevation or the pitch, and neither should the FCS. So it's going to fly as it's built, basically. Let's um, try that. Right, speed that up. Control has been lost. So now, with no control over the uh, the elevation there, the pitch, and neither and the FCS also not having control over pitch, the thing flies perfectly stably, like a, almost like a glider. Look, it does not tumble. It's going to slowly go nose down. Oh no, it's just going to fly perfectly stable. So that aircraft does not appear to be modelled unstable once we remove the control to the pitch. Now, the Hornet, we don't have the ability to damage or remove the fly-by-wire. The F-16, we don't. We have a, a kind of a type of override, but we don't really have control for that either. The Mirage, we do not have the ability to remove the fly-by-wire completely. You can override with testing, but it actually does take control back when you're at critical attitudes. Uh, it will remove control from you. So the only one where we can really fully remove control is the JF-17, and that shows that it flies stable, and the SU-27, and that shows that it flies unstable. The guys have quickly requested that we add on um, another test, so that I've taken all of the failures off. We're starting again. This time, we're going to remove all type of battery and electrics. Everything is going to fail. A major electric failure. We're going to remove, uh, to ensure that we have no control over anything, just to ensure we can fly it like a glider with zero input into any of the controls from anything. So we've got full failure now. Let's check that out, see what happens. Okay, full loss of everything now, and you can see I've got no control over anything at all anymore. Neither is the FCS, there is no longer an FCS, and you can see that she glides perfectly fine, like a glider. Nothing we can do there. Okay, so again, we think it shows the base model in the JFC-17, again, appears to be stable. So after several hours of experimentation, we can draw our conclusion. And it goes back to the old, um, I always say, just do the basic logic test. Do you think the programmers would have modeled these planes to be unstable, sorry, and then put the fly-by-wire layer on top of that? Well, that's highly unlikely. That is, if you like, the proper way to do it. But that takes a lot of programming and a lot of processing power. It's highly unlikely. If I was a programmer, I would not have done that. Um, and we think um, ED have done it exactly the same way. We think that from the conclusions that we can draw that these aircraft are not modelled unstable. They're actually modelled stable. And then the way that they can produce some elements of instability, like the flanker uh, removing the fly-by-wire, is actually a separate flight model that they have. So when you remove the FCS from the flanker, you are not simply you're, you're not in the simulation removing the FCS. You're actually switching it to another matrix of control parameters. It's just changing to another flight model. We are 95% sure that that's the way that it's going to be done. We'll never get any confirmation from ED because we never do. But uh, that's what we think. Anything you want to add onto that tape? There's another type of stability called dynamic stability, which is where you get your pilot-induced oscillations and your um, Dutch roll modes that we were talking about on the rudder video. Mm -hmm. But in terms of static, that's... That's all we've got to show at the moment on this. I hope that was useful and see you later.